back, 2024, rolling right along. Absolutely. What, what should we cover today? So uh, one of the things that's interesting about last year's CPR report was the fact that in going through it, people are like, well, what do you think is going to happen next year? And so you and I took a little bit of time to think about what we had seen in all the work we did, research in the CPR, you know, what we thought we would be seeing in 23-24. And so at the back part of the 23-2024 CPR, there's an analysis of how we did. And so for those of you who are TLDR-focused, we don't suck. It was pretty good, <laughs> right? I think we may have been a little bit optimistic, but I think if you're going to work in cybersecurity, you got to be optimistic. Otherwise, you just go turn off your computers. Um, but I think it was pretty interesting. I think it would be fun to sort of review it just a little bit, just sort of a, maybe a quick episode to talk about sort of how we did. And, yeah. and if it's cool with you, I'm going to start with yours because you had the very first one. And it was... So there's, there's five, right? There's five. That's right. There's five. And the first one to me, when it first came out last year, was a little counterintuitive, right? Um, because so many niche problems, so many new advanced attacks, everybody's like, oh my goodness, AI. And you said, my prediction is people are going to think hard about getting back to the basics. And um, I, I know that from the report and the research we've done, you're pretty much on target. But I'd, I'd love to ask you what you think you've seen over the course of the last 12 months. Uh, that reflect on that prediction you made at the end of last year? The um, most clear example and the most like, o- like obvious example towards this thought is people start with a destination in mind or, and, pick, and pick whatever it is. Um, but the moment they start on that path, whether it's a technology implementation or whatever it is, um, in the course of kind of laying out like their project plan and how are we going to achieve this objective, they realize like, oh, there's a lot of things we need to do that we haven't done or things we have to do better or things we have to fix in order to realize this outcome, right? And so um, one, one technical example I would draw is saying we have someone who wants to do um, broad-based security monitoring, right? And you know, we're helping them build a security operations center but in the course of doing that, we realize, oh, your data has some opportunities for improvement. Not only, like, where it comes from, how it's collected, um, but just, like, the fidelity of information and consistency that, um, of data that we receive is, uh, is varied. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's just mm-hmm. say that. Um, which kind of starts the month-long process of saying, okay, like, let's worry about the hygiene of these things, Right. And that's one example of how we kind of start to like kind of work through it of just kind of starting to clean stuff up. But in order to realize their vision of like, like whole, whole security analytics platform means you got to do some basic stuff first. Right. And so, which kind of spins off policies, like there's policies about how technology gets implemented all towards driving towards a standard. And so there's a whole bunch of examples I can think of that are similar to that. Um, But I think it's, I think it was a good prediction for last year. I think it's even a better p- prediction, and it's more true this year. Um, and I would suspect if we do head into a recession here, as budget starts to become a little bit more constrained, people are going to have to be a little bit more creative about how they solve this, which means they have to get back to basics to just do basic block and tackling because you can't buy your way out of it. Nice. Yeah, and I'll tell you one more thing in support of what you had predicted last year that I've seen repeatedly this year with clients was folks asking us, and it's not even just clients, it's, it's just sort of like randos talking, um, where do I start, right? People yeah. have asked that question, and I know we've spent a fair amount of time just helping you know, give away information about how do you start looking at your platform, how do you look at your business needs and derive sort of a minimalist security program for yourselves just to get going. And to me, that was very much reflective of what you had said about people getting back to basics because the most basic thing is what the hell should I do first? Right. right. So hundred percent. All right. So prediction number two was one of mine, which was we had seen a lot in the course of last year about organizations collaborating and teaming up. You and I had done some work with some of the universities uh, that were trying to come together and do some work. Uh, We had seen some federation of county governments, you know, doing things together. And I'm just going to take a win on this one. Yeah, right? for sure. Because elsewhere big, in the CPR. Big old W. Yeah, we, take, we, take, we talk a lot about whole estate, right? And, and that is actually a term of art now, right? And the SLCGP drove whole estate. And some of that was in last year's CPR. But when I, when, when I looked at it through, through the lens of all the people that you and I had talked to, 
it really felt like they were trying to commune with other people to figure out how to do this. And some of it with the universities, it felt it was much more mission-oriented, goal-oriented. Um, and for some of the, the state and the local authorities that we talked to, it felt like they were trying to do more, right? They were just trying to do more for folks, and that, that required collaboration. So I was pretty excited about the fact that I think they actually did. Not excited just because I got to be right, because who cares? <laughs> but excited because I think the m- most important about cybersecurity is when people talk to one another and share what they know. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, you you nailed that one, for sure. That was uh, straight out of Nostradamus's <laughs> globe there, crystal ball. Excellent, excellent. All right, so listen, I'm going to go to your next one, which was um, it really had to do with the immense amount of dynamism we see uh, inside the organizations that we serve. We saw a lot of it coming out of the plague, right, because so much remoteness, so many service architectures changed to support that more sort of remotable environment, and you said, I think people are going to start paying attention to staying on top of all of this and understanding what's going on. Yeah. Um, so the spirit of it was uh, keeping acronym inventories of assets mm-hmm. and staying on top of what asset sits where. Uh, not only did we see people really start to focus on that, um, I see that way of thinking especially carry on to today. Right. And uh, you know, talking to someone just even last week, like they're making migration out to the cloud and worried about asset visibility mm-hmm. and the control of who's spinning up what asset and where. So like automatically people um, started there and they continue to stay there regardless of where they go on their journey, which is which is kind of nice to see um, people's mindset, you know, kind of continue and stay there. So um I, I feel like that was pretty accurate too. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, I can tell you today, I was talking to one of our folks about a call they had with a state CISO that we know, and that person's <laughs> primary interest going forward into next year was number one, sort of like gratitude for how much insight we're giving them in terms of visibility, but how do they get more and how do they figure it out? And for us, you know, being in cybersecurity for a long time, like well, visibility is like the first thing you do. And it also goes sort of to your back back to basics, right? Which is yeah. that visibility, that understanding of all the things that I care about. I think I think you nailed it. And I think that the cloud and that that change in architecture really changed people's view of it. We will see it on the the private sector as well. And I can just think of um, a, another organization that we were working with, and they're trying to be better about vulnerability management, mm. right? I was like, well, in order to be totally good at vulnerability management and make sure like you have appropriate coverage. Uh, you have to know where all your assets mm-hmm. are. So like, let's start at like the basics first, like let's get that taken care of. So, um, yeah, it's kind of for first things first. I like it. All right. So my second prediction, um, I'm going to give myself like a B minus on, uh, again, maybe a little bit too optimistic. We had seen coming out of the midterm elections that there was a lot of concern about election security, and we've talked about it in any number of episodes. And my thought had been that people would be thinking ahead, and they'd be saying a lot of election-driven urgency around making cybersecurity better, particularly, obviously, in the SLED community. And I think what we saw as people continue to take it seriously, you know, nothing bad going on there. But there hasn't been any sort of like wholesale upscaling. You know, it, it, it's not that much different than it was before. Really smart people working really hard, but doing a lot of the same things. I haven't seen a lot of investment in technologies to better identify false information or deep fakes, what have you. We have seen people asking us for even more coverage, more information sort of during the election cycle. But I think what we're getting is a lot of urgent requests now-ish as we enter into primary season. And I had sort of expected that we would have seen it through the end of last year. So I'm, I'm going to take like maybe maybe even a C on this because I think while we may see urgency for people who really care about elections and working their asses off, I think that's great. I don't think we saw urgency until it really became sort of an issue in primary season. I think you got to give yourself a little bit more credit, <laughs> especially when I look at the presidential election. Those aren't every day. Right. Right. And so even though people might um, – want to be more focused on it, they need to have an opportunity to be focused on it, right? And so we're coming up on that now. True, true, true. So while we missed the 2020, this recommendation came after 2020. Right. Uh, next elections, I guess later this calendar year. Right. So uh, we should know pretty soon if if this is real. So I would say you might feel like it's be my, I personally would have scored you higher. <laughs> well, thank um, you. 
but uh, we'll 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 see if people kind of carry that philosophy through the the fall time this year. Fair enough. All right, last prediction. This one's yours. And uh, I remember when it first came out, it was I won't say controversial, but it was illuminating for some folks, and they were like, "Really?" Um, and this was that these state and local authorities, and particularly the statewide officers would lead sort of the charge in any number of areas of cybersecurity ahead of private industry, which is typically seen as being the bellwether of great security. Um, yeah. And you know, there's a number of comments you'd made in the course of it, but the scale of the operations, the difficulty, the smartness that has to go into the appropriate use of spend and stuff. Um, how do you feel that went through? I, I think this has happened and continues to happen today. Um, but in ways I'm not sure I necessarily would have put my thumb on. Mm-hmm. And for all the reasons you just mentioned, um, breadth of operations, um, scale, how information is accessed and what information needs to be available. Um, these are in state, local environments. These are challenges that very, very few private counterparts have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, but the piece that was... Uh, a little interesting to me that maybe I was kind of situation aware of, I didn't really quite see it manifest itself, is the role of the state CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, in the realization of all these things, right? Um, Because collaboration, cooperation at scale is a very hard thing to do. Right. But I think what we've started to see is uh, uh, the security leaders at the state level are becoming a little bit more of a politician. And, um, and I, I mean that in like, with like really good intent that they're there, um, helping to get people on board. They're talking with people, overcoming concerns, challenges, really like working through some of this stuff Mm -hmm. in a very like bipartisan way to like get to the outcome that everybody believes that, that they should get to. And so, um, I think that's kind of a unique skill set that I've started to see emerge emerge at that level, which I think kind of helps make this real. 100%. I just want to give you like a shout out and some support because we've seen a couple of things we've actually had podcasts about, right? One of them was that the local, I think it was city authorities in Massachusetts banded together to improve IT and cybersecurity purchasing, right? Which is something you don't see a lot of private industry companies doing like ever, Right. And secondly, and I know he's featured in another part of the CPR, is Mike Gregg out of North Dakota, right, who brought together a whole gang of folks to create a SOC that could service those people, a community of shared interest. But here's just like a guy doing his thing in a very cold place in the country, and he managed to bring together not only the folks inside his own state, but he actually lobbied his state legislature so that he could help people outside his state. And I think that's the style of leadership. Number one, I think it's kind of impossible to do it in some cases in private industry. But I think that to the point that you made in the notes from last year's prediction, guys like Mike Gregg are actually stepping up and helping a lot of folks and providing a kind of leadership we don't see everywhere else. The capabilities and opportunities that exist within states or local governments or wherever to do this, um, I I think is a lot more readily available than it would be in the private counterparts because like – I don't know, DuPont isn't going to be sharing their information with 3M type of thing, right? And it's just like, that's just not the spirit of uh, kind of cooperation that we've typically seen in in the private sector. So um, I just think the nature of government, um, in government, and the challenge that they face kind of forces people's hands to act this way. And so it's nice to see people stepping up and... uh, you know, taking action. Well, I think we did a decent job, right? For those people who read those things and said, maybe I'm going to act in a slightly different way because these two chuckleheads decided it might go that way. I think you would have made some pretty good choices going forward. Um, and I'm anxious to see what comes up in the final version of the report to see how we really ended up doing. Yeah. Cool. That's great. I'm good. Cool. All right. Um, if you are listening to this episode, we will post the CPR 2022 2023 CPR link, so old and new. Yep. Actually, or 2023 is last year's, 2024. 2022, and then this is 2023, 2024. Yep. Okay. So, anyway, regardless. A couple of them. Whether it's 80, 81, or 82, (laughs) we're going to put... 222, 21, whatever it takes. We'll put all all links in the the show notes. Um, If you like this episode, please like, share, 
um, help evangelize uh, the pwn to goodness. Send us questions. We love answering your questions. Yeah. If you have interesting deals you hear about, interesting companies you hear about, let us know. You know what I would really love? What would you really love? An additional term for the pit of despair. Oh. So if someone has a term for pit of despair, and you want to in, insert it into the judges panel. Send it along in email to? Pwned at newharborsecurity.com. There will be swag involved for, for terms that we pick. Yeah, I love that. Damn straight. Yeah, so if you want if you want swag, mailbag, Yep. send us questions, send us p- potential terms for pit of despair. Back. You're selected, you get swag. Good swag. Loving it. <laughs> All right, get you on the next episode.